Welcome to Butterflies of the Biosphere. I'm Dr. Dan Danaha, and today I've got with me Richard Roebuck, the species champion for the Sussex branch of butterfly conservation. It's a, the brown hair seed you're a species champion of, isn't it, Richard? Yes. Um, what, what, what do species champions do? That's very interesting. I was, I've just volunteered to be species champion. My understanding is it's, it's having a knowledge of the, uh, about the species, its phenology, its habits, conservation uh, status, etc. So if we get inquiries in them, sort of knowledge has been based on a lot of experience over the years of doing survey work with other members of uh, the Sussex Conservation Branch uh, uh, looking at the distribution for the forthcoming atlas. Okay, um, so what's the best way of finding whether or not you've got the brown hair streak in a part of Sussex? The easiest way is to look for the eggs during the winter. Uh, they are small white spheres that uh, look like sea urchins and you find them on young growth of uh, the blackthorn, which is the uh, food plant, or the other plant is uh, bullis, or wild plum. So uh, what we're doing here today is see if we can uh, find an egg and then everybody can see what it's all about. Fabulous. You talked about the atlas earlier on. Yes. When you did your survey within Sussex, did you find any interesting trends? Yes, we did actually. Um, uh, it was something that there was a strange distribution of where we were finding the, uh, the eggs over the winter uh, relative to the blackthorn. And then somebody had the bright idea to compare it with a, a ge geological map of uh, Sussex, and it was found that the, the blackthorn prefers a heavy soil, um, uh, which is mainly clay, and they're leading part way to the base of the downs where it's chalk. And then all sort of north of Balney, that's a green sand area, and we had great difficulty finding the eggs, mainly because there's very little blackthorn up there. So we believe it's got something to do with the Yeah, there's a few records. I mean, uh, the, 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 we're on Ditchling Common at the moment, which is right at the north end of the biosphere. Uh, there have been a few records that have come in closer to Brighton. Uh, Jamie Burston uh, found some at uh, Patcham, and I think you also you're also aware of another area. Where well, actually, it's interesting because Jeremy Burgess also found them at Patcham, and then I found them uh, at as eggs at Bentley, uh, local nature reserve. Right. So they are there, but we really don't know a lot about it, do we? Yeah. Perhaps it needs. More con concentrated effort on the survey, probably during winter months, uh, trying to find the blackthorn to start with, and then uh, take it from there. Yeah, and maybe uh, people that are watching this video can also help if they see uh, the white, uh, sorry, the, the eggs of the brown hair streak. Maybe they could also let us know about that, or even the adults. Well, that, well, that would be excellent. But what, what we're going to do next is give you some tips on actually how to find the eggs. That would be fantastic. Let's go and do that. Okay, we were talking earlier about the uh, brown hair streak uh, laying its eggs on blackthorn. Well, here we've got a typical ideal habitat on Ditchling Common uh, for the brown hair streak to lay its eggs. This is sort of a free ranging blackthorn thicket, uh, but the most important thing is not the tall plants uh, which the brown hair streak actually avoids. What we're looking for is plant is, is stems or suckers that are about two years old, or maybe two years old with one year's growth on it, such as that. So, what you're looking for is smaller plants and even smaller than that. In fact, there's one there that looks quite ideal because it's it's on its own and separated um, and because it's south facing this will be very warm and it's very attractive to the, the, the female brown hair streak to come and lay eggs so if we have a look at this one and lo and behold uh, we have an egg right on key which is quite handy <laughs> so it hasn't taken us too long to find but we'll show you a close-up of that one in a while to give you an idea it is a small white egg but it is clearly visible from where I'm stuck Okay, Rich, um, uh, so this egg, uh, how long is it an egg? It's quite amazing, really, that this egg could have been laid sort of uh, last July, but typically a brown hair street egg uh, will take eight months from the day it's, it's uh, been laid to when it finally hatches, which would be towards the end of March in, in, in the spring. So that's a long is, time, isn't it's it? It's quite remarkable, so it's pretty resilient. And this is common of hair streaks? Yes. Yes, uh, the, some of the species do it, like the black hair streak, purple hair streak, and of course the brown hair streak is well known for it. So it's like a time capsule really, which protects it through the winter, come all weathers. Fantastic. So, look, if you find any brown hair streak eggs when you're going out on your walks, we'd love to hear about that either up on the Butterflies of the Biosphere Facebook page or on the Sussex Sightings page. That's, um, you just put into Google Sussex and Butterflies and you'll soon find it. Anyway, Richard, it's been a real joy today. Thanks for coming out yeah, with me. Great weather this time of year. Fantastic.